I should have tried to be more ordinary. He would never ordinary. Saw the movie, and the first thing, first thing, I just want to, can I just give you a hug real quick? It's been a, I mean, oh my God, I, I, I had to come give you a hug. I mean, geez, your life. I know. I, didn't, I don't think a lot of people understand how the things that you have been through in your life, and your that's search for love. That's just 20 years of it, too. And it's a, that's a 20 year, I mean, I haven't seen a movie, but I know what's in it. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that went on in 20 years. I mean, how did we survive? But we did. You two have formed more than just a friendship, a real bond, haven't yeah. you? We're yeah. having children. <laughs> okay. It's in the process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you love about this man, and what have you learned about him? I have been a fan of Elton for as long as I can remember. I sang your song when I was 17 to audition for RADA, and um, I've loved the idea and his and Bernie's music forever, but it's only since we've become friends and I have found out how interested and kind and curious and caring and full of love and concern he is that I've fallen in love with him as a person. He is intuitive in the extreme and one of the kindest people I know. And it works both ways because um, I'm obviously a lot older than Tara but we're very much alike. Um, artists are very much alike in a lot of ways. They can be very self-destructive, they can be very moody and they can you know, go off and shut themselves away. And we both have the ability to do that. So um, I, you know, I'm, my ambition in life now is to make sure he doesn't make the same mistakes as I did. Can we talk about some of those mistakes that are in the movie? I had no idea. I, I'm in Dodger Stadium last week, and I see the picture of you with the baseball yeah. bat, and it's such an iconic moment that everybody loves. But yeah. just, I mean, just days before that, two a day, day, a day before, two, right? two days before yeah. Dodger Stadium, I was having my stomach pumped. Um, I took an overdose. And uh, there I was two days later on Dodger, at Dodger Stadium with Cary Grant and Billy Jean King and having the time of my life. You can say that I'm resilient. And that's one thing I am. I'm resilient. And um, I wasn't going to pass the opportunity of playing that great stadium for two days. By the way, the Dodgers are playing really well. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it was just you know, an it was the peak of my career at that point. It was the yeah. highlight of my career to play Dodger Stadium. Are you kidding me? But I was not mentally well before that, obviously. Um, but, you know, as a performer, performers are very resilient and they come up, they come on stage and they do, they do their bit and they do it well. You have to. That's what you do. You're a performer. Uh, and that's what saved my life, being a performer. Reggie's piano teacher thinks he's good enough for a scholarship. Really? You think he's got that kind of talent? Of course he has. But you'd know that if you took the slightest bit of interest in me or this family. Bryce Dallas Howard is brilliant in this movie also. Yeah. But she's so uh, one of the nicest people in the world, but so damn mean in this movie. Mm. You look at her and you say, wow, this is, it, it shocks you. Her performance is great, though. I don't know. So, I mean, right, I'm you not, well, you know. Yeah, I do, yeah. I do. And Bryce is fantastic in the movie and she brings a very specific energy. And, you know, Al Alton has spoken a lot about his, he had a tricky relationship with his parents and, mm -hmm. And Bryce is, you know, she, she fulfills that role very, very well because that's, I think, where a lot of your problems stem from, if I may say so myself. That's no, I was, I I was a product of a yeah. very unhappy yeah. uh, marriage. And, you know, mm -hmm. the sad thing is my mum and my dad um, married the wrong people. They shouldn't mm -hmm. have married each other. And the great thing about when they finally split up and, you know, went their way and had a divorce, they found happiness, which I'm so happy about. They both found the partner they should have had before that. Although, so, thank the Lord, they made that mistake, right? Right, right, because it, it's, uh, yeah. But uh, it was, you know, and in, in those days, in the 50s, it was a different attitude, very conservative. So when people um, were going to get divorced, it was considered to be an outrage or please don't tell the neighbours, mm -hmm. make sure the neighbours don't know. That was what it was like. And um, they honestly stayed together much longer for my education. And I appreciate that. Um, but it was tough because every time they got together, they would argue about me. But the great thing is that after they did divorce, they found happiness, and I'm really pleased about that. Taryn, you recorded Rocket Man, but mm -hmm. is there another, any other of the songs that kind of seeped into your soul? Because there are so many moments in this movie where you are singing the songs, and we feel this like we're, you feel this weird back and forth that you remember you performing that song in that moment. I love different songs for different reasons. I have to say, I think 
in our movie, your song is is a, is a bit of a is a bit of a triumph as a storytelling moment because it's a moment of. Uh, Can I just catch up? It is one of the. It is a moment where you're sitting in the movie and you're like. <gasps> Thank you. That's actually largely. I'm the one singing, but it's actually largely down to Jamie Bell's work as well. He's a beautiful scene partner in that mm -hmm. bit of the movie, and he pays attention wonderfully. And it's a real, it's a real moment of uh, a real celebration of Alton and Bernie's friendship. And I. I feel very, very, very proud of it. So I would say that that moment and that song. Mm. And he's, I've, listen, I haven't seen the movie, but I've heard the music. And he's done the most phenomenal job with the music. So I'm, you know, our songs are not easy to sing. They're not. They're quite complicated. They're, they're not straightforward songs. Don't let the sun go down on me. Tiny dancer aren't straightforward songs right. to sing. And the more he started singing, the better he got. And Giles Martin, who of course is George's son, um, yeah. is the musical director on the whole film and encouraged him to loosen up, do the rock songs, and he just, he sings things like Amarina, Hercules, Saturday Night, so brilliantly bitches back, yeah. and, and he really put every fiber of his um, body into that, into the singing, let alone the acting. I mean, he's worked double hard. He's Thank done the you. singing, and he's done the acting. Yeah. And I wanted this movie, I didn't want someone to be lip syncing. Right. Um, not taking away from any other movies, but I wanted someone to sing. So you were more convinced, and, and I'm hoping when I see the final thing tonight, I know the music is fantastic, and I know people have told me that it's seamless, the music lifts the music from scene to scene, but his music, what I've heard, is quite unreal, quite unreal. Thank you. No, it's phenomenal. Um, we are right outside you shot, I'm still standing. Right. And in this movie, you get a sense of what that song really means. Now, now that you think back, is it a miracle that you are still standing, that you're here today? My life has been a miracle, and it's been a series of serendipity and luck, good fortune, and brave decisions. Um, but sitting here in this room now, the movie is showing tonight, premiering for the first time, and I know I'm still standing, it's probably the last scene in the movie. It is surreal, because what I tried to do to myself, I shouldn't be sitting here. And I've been very, very lucky in the fact that I suddenly realized that I had two choices. One was to die, one was to live. Um, and it took me 16 years to ask for help, to say three words, I need help, because I was so proud. Because I knew I had a problem. It's like, wow, I have a problem, big time. <laughs> and I was very unhappy with myself, so I was ashamed of myself. But those three words, I'm saying to everyone out there, if you have a problem and you're unhappy and you're sad and you're lonely, phone up someone, ask them for help, they will help you. People help me straight away. And I was so bowled over by kindness and people wanting to get my life back on track. I had to do a lot of work myself, mm -hmm. but people are so kind and so fantastic. So I saved my life. Um, and here I am, sitting in the place, above the place where we shot that iconic scene in the video. Yeah. You're looking at a survivor. Yeah, yeah. no, really. Yeah. But I still feel like a little kid, too. <laughs> hey. I love that. that. That's why I had to give him a hug when he first walked in. I saw the movie. I was like, i got to give you a hug. I, listen, I'm 72 years old. I still feel like a kid. I still have a lot of energy. And you know, I'm the luckiest man in the world. I'm on the biggest world tour of my life. I have this film coming out, um, which everyone said is amazing. And I know it. I hope and pray that it gets a great reaction. But even if it doesn't, I know that we probably have made the film that we set out to make, and that's all that counts. I feel that um, way, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and so this year is amazing. I have The Lion King coming out. Yeah, and, and how about and, that? Uh, and then I have a book coming out. And, um, it's all, you know, in the 72nd year, 73rd year of my life, this is the biggest year of my career. So I'm very happy. This man has been such an important part of it. And Dexter Fletcher, who directed it, Giles it Martin, who marvelous. did the music, yeah. all the actors in the film, Richard Madden, um, Bryce Howard, um, Jamie Bell, everyone in the cast, I thank them from the bottom of my heart. And David Furnish and Matthew Vaughan, who produced the film, have done the most amazing job. By the way, it, you talk about all the actors, but really this is also about your relationship with Bernie. Yeah. And you do such a great job of showing the magic of that relationship. How did you guys work on that on the set? Well, I remember one of the, it was one of the first things I asked Elton when we first met, you know, what was it like when you first met Bernie? And I'll never forget what Elton said. He said it was like meeting the brother I never had. I had someone to go to the cinema wow. with. And wow. I always say this, but it's, like it's mad that once upon a time, Elton John didn't have, might not have had someone to go to the cinema with. And I found that to be a very inspiring relationship aside from all of the beautiful music. I just think that friendship and that brother, that that brotherly love between them, was a was a was an exciting relationship to build. And Jamie Bell was the perfect choice for that. Yeah, we've been together over 50 years, and we have never had an argument. Um, there were times when we 
took a distance from myself because he needed to take distance from me. Well, I never thought that we would never come back together um, because we, we were still friends. It, I'm so proud of my relationship with him, and I love him more now than I did when I met him, which says a lot because in this business, you know, you can get knifed in the back, you know, there's not much loyalty. But to have that relationship and to be celebrating this relationship of mine and his 50 years along the line, um, he was the glue that held me together. I, I don't understand how you sit at a piano, though, and take those words and make those words into magic. Nor do I. Oh. <laughs> I don't. No. I have no idea. It's just, it's just happenstance and serendipity, but it's, he gives me a lyric, and I sit down, I look at the lyric, and read it through, and there's a little film comes in my head, and then I start and put my hands on the piano, and off we go. And to the, I have no idea. It's a God-given thing, and I'm not even, never thought about it. It freaks me out, thinking, well, what will I be able to do it this time? But I never fail to be able to write two lyrics. For those of you who don't know, in Rocket Man, um, I don't sing anything. Taron has recorded, re-recorded, all the songs that are in the movie. Your radio show. Yeah. It is a, I don't know if everyone discovered it. Taryn was on it. It's a yeah. great interview and you guys go through music, but you have an eclectic mix of different people. You find different artists and you, you've you embedded all these new young artists in your radio well, show Well, we started, well, I just did my 200th show um, in two days ago, I recorded it. We started it um, with Apple uh, and I said, listen, I just want to play the music that I want to play. I just want to play great music. I don't want to have a, this is my show, so I'm choosing the music. So what I do every month, they send me all the new music that they have, and then I buy my own CDs too, and I write the CDs that they don't have on the list down, because they have more of the poppy things, and I have more of the more intricate things. Mm -hmm. We sit down together, uh, Charlie from my office comes over, we go through all the new music and say yay or nay, and then I play my music and say what do you think, and then I put them all together, and we do four shows at a time, which is four one-hour shows, and it is the most fun you can possibly have because there's so much great music out there by so many young artists. And, you know, we started playing Billie Eilish, Khalid, people like that, ages, Christine and the Queens, before they even became successful. And then you see them become successful and you think, yeah, I'm so happy for you guys because, you know, I can see that talent at an, at, at an early age, at, at their early age. And I'm, I'm able to help them. I FaceTime two people a week. This week I did Lizzo, mm -hmm. who was so fantastic. I love you, Lizzo. And a, a boy called Jacob Leventhal, who's from New York, who wrote beautiful songs. And no one's heard of him really yet, but they will. Um, and, and you get to FaceTime people and become friends with them. Brandy Carlisle, who I knew anyway, but I was able to FaceTime her. Katie Musgrave did a whole program with me. Yeah. Q-Tip did a whole program mm -hmm. with me. He did one. Brandon from the Killers did one. Yeah, great it's, music yeah, too. Yeah. He, I, you yeah. turned me on to some people. Oh, absolutely. Show. Thank yeah. you. It's fun. And it's, you know, if you don't keep up with the young, you're dead. You have to look at new movies, new music, listen to new music, read new books, see new artists, photographers, because when you find something new, it inspires you. I know all the great old stuff. It's in my head. It's in my computer. And I love it. It makes me happy. But it doesn't make me as happy as when I hear something new. Like I say Billie Eilish or Lizzo or Khalid or Channel Trays and, and, and Tiana Taylor. Do you know Tiana Taylor? I know Tiana Taylor. Just with her. baby. <laughs> I love her so much. And I've been able to talk to her. Yes. So, yeah, it was great. so it's like this inspires me. The young have the energy and they have the, the ability to make me feel inspired. And I love that. And I hope I will never stop doing that. I appreciate it. Thank you. And I appreciate this movie. Thank you guys you did so a hell of a job. I can't Thank wait. I can't wait till the world gets to see it. Thank you.